Hello and welcome back to Phil's Drone Zone and welcome to part 15 of Learning Piece by Piece, the complete beginner's guide to working in Motion 5. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click that bell so you'll be updated when future videos or any other videos on the channel are uploaded. Also, if you are brand new to uh, Motion, I would recommend going back to some of the earlier tutorials before attempting to uh, duplicate what we're doing here. Okay, today we're going to continue our look at the behaviors and we're going to be looking at the ramp behavior and what that can do for you. All of the animations that you can see on the screen right now, you should be able to produce at this level you are at with simple keyframing. However, these have been done by adding the ramp behavior to the object and there is not a single keyframe being used. Simply put, the ramp behavior enables you to apply a smooth transition from one value on a parameter to another. And that is exactly what a keyframe does. Beginners often find it difficult to understand keyframing at first and the ramp behavior for them is a more than useful substitute. And also where you have a project where you have multiple similar objects that need similar animation, then a ramp behavior could save you a great deal of time. So let's have a look at how we use the ramp behavior. Okay, so we're gonna animate um, the orange circle and we're gonna fade it in and out. So we're gonna need to use the opacity parameter. Now you can either go to the little arrow on opacity, add parameter behavior and click ramp or right click on the word itself, add parameter behavior and click ramp. That'll bring up the control panel, which you can see is already set to opacity. So we're gonna to go to properties and we're going to reduce the opacity to zero, leave its start value at zero and the end value we'll put at 100. We're gonna increase the curvature to 100 to make it as smooth a transition as possible. And then we want it to start at 30 frames, we'll set the start offset to 30. The end offset is the number of frames before the end of the project, which is 300. I want it to finish at 60, so that means 240 frames before the end. And it's as simple as that. We've produced, without any keyframes, that little transition. So um, we'll do the arrow, and this time we'll go to behaviors, add parameter, and ramp behavior. And so it now needs to be set. Now you'll notice I've got the anchor point set at the bottom of the arrow, which means we're gonna scale it up. So we need to go to properties, transform, position, scale, Y parameter. And then we'll go to properties again, find scale on Y and reduce that down to zero. Go back to our behaviors box, set the end value to 100%. Set the curvature again to make it as smooth as possible to 100. Start offset to 30 and the end offset as before, 240. And that's it, we're done. Very, very, very quick to use and create an animation using the ramp behavior. Very, very simple to use. So let's have a look at something where there are multiple objects and how you can save yourself a lot of time using the ramp behavior. So I've set up a little group here and I'm, as a background, I'm using the, um, the snow scene that we created a few tutorials ago using the particle emitters. And then I've put this uh, like window kind of frame thing over the top, just using some rectangles and decorating them a little bit with some lines and some indents. Um, I've set up a group called chords on top of that and there's nothing as yet in that group. So now I'm going to add a new group and I'm going to call this blinds. Okay and now we're going to create our first blind and we're going to go add a rectangle and just draw out a simple rectangle. 
something about like that. Remember to overlap the window frames. So something about like that. Now it doesn't look much like a blind at the moment. So let's make it look a little bit more like a blind. So to that rectangle, what I'm going to do is go to filters, stylize and add extrude. So that'll bring up my extrude filter box. And now I want to set the angle to 270. And now it's starting to look a little bit better. And we'll increase the distance a little bit just till we are happy. And then we will just play with the gradient a little bit until it looks a bit smoother and a bit more curved. Okay, so we've created the first blind. So what we need to do now is to fill the screen up. But first we're going to position the first one on Y, not X, on Y. We're going to drag that up to the top. And we're going to position it so it's just, just out of sight at the top. And then that's it. The first one is done. And then we will duplicate that. And we will move that down. And I'm using the gray area to measure to gauge distance as to where I should position it. We'll duplicate again, go to properties and we'll move this one down. And we're gonna keep doing this until we filled up the entire screen. Duplicate and move it into position. And I'll carry on with this, I'll speed it up a little bit and I'll see you when it's all finished. Okay, so that's the last one done. And now what we need to do is we need to go back to our first blind. And what we're going to do is go to behaviors. We'll look for parameter. Add ramp behavior. And that'll bring up our box again. We need to apply it to rotation on X. And then we will set the, the start offset to 30 frames. We want it to last for one second only. So that's 60 frames from 300. So we need to set that to 240 before the end. And that set up our timing. And now all we need to do now is set the end value. And we'll set that for now to 75 degrees. We're going to alter this later. And then when we play that back, you can see that it moves nicely into position. Okay, so to save time now, which is great, all I have to do is click, is press Option, click and drag to the next one. Option, click, drag, until all of the blinds have got a copy of that ramp behavior. Option, click, drag. Option, click, drag. And all of them, once you've got all of them with that, then you've actually finished the first part of the animation. Then that didn't take long at all. So it's now just by copying that ramp behavior, what you've created is they're all opening in unison. However, you can see a problem with the angle of the ones in the, in the lower portion. So we need to just tweak the angles a little bit. I'm not sure, quite sure why that happens. Um, but we'll just find the fourth from the bottom, there it is, and we'll just go to the end value and we'll set that to 73, perhaps. Yeah, and that looks a bit better. So we'll go to the next one and set that to 71. And now they're starting to look all the same. And the next one down and we'll set that to 69. And then finally, the last one, which is at the top, of course, of the pile, we'll set that to 67. And that's it. They now look pretty much all the same at the, at the same angle. Okay, so having done that, what we need to do now is go back to our first one, our first rectangle. And to that, we will go to Behaviors, Parameter, ramp behavior again. Now we're going to set start that off at 90 frames 
but first we need to go to properties transform position on y because we're going to move it up in y space so we'll set the start position to 90 and the end position we want it to last for three seconds so that's 180 from 300 120 120 frames before the end now we're not going to do anything with these values the end value in this one the first one because we don't want the top one to move anywhere so we're simply going to select option click and drag again to the next rectangle now for this one we're going to need to move this up in order to complete the animation. So by dragging on the end value, you'll see a little red line on the screen. Now we wanna position that red line just on the divide between the white and the gray portions of the rectangle. And we're gonna do exactly the same. Option, click and drag. And then we're gonna position the red end point to the same position as we did previously. And we're going to continue doing that, copying the ramp behavior, positioning the end point using the red line, and we'll keep going until all of them have been done again. And you can see, you start to see that this is actually saving a great deal of time. If I was keyframing these, it would take an awful lot longer. So we're just clicking Option, click and drag, and then repositioning so that the red line finishes at the same place as all the others at the top there. Okay, and that's it, it's, it's all done. Um, and there you have a nice little smooth motion. So you have the blinds opening using one, bar one parameter, ramp, one ramp behavior, and then you have them moving upwards using a different ramp behavior. So we're going to go back to this chords group now and into that chords group, just for a little bit of decoration, we're just going to add a simple line. So we're going to just draw a line from behind the first blind, hold down shift to keep it in a straight line and we'll position it somewhere near the middle of the bottom rectangle. We'll go to shape and we'll color it black. And then I'm just gonna duplicate that line. So we have two of them. And now we'll move the second line over on X so that it's over the other side of the window. Somewhere about there we'll do. Okay, and all the makes is to animate those lines now. First, I need to set the in point for both of them, select the line and then press I on the keyboard to select the in point. Okay, and now I'll animate them. I wanna go forward to 90 frames where the blinds start moving up. And I'm gonna animate them on the first and last point offsets. So go to shape. And as we've done previously, we'll set the start cap to square, end cap to square. And we're gonna use that last point offset to animate it. And this time we're going to use keyframes. I could use a ramp behavior, but I'm just going to show you that it takes about the same amount of time to keyframe. So we'll keyframe that one at 90 frames on 100, move forward 90 frames, and keyframe that at zero. And we'll do exactly the same for line two, set it to square, square. This time we have to do it in reverse. We'll keyframe at zero at 180 frames and then we'll move back 90 frames and move it up to 100 percent and that animation took me almost as long as it took to actually copy and paste all those ramp behaviors to the rectangles so it can save you an awful lot of time um, by using the ramp behavior where you have multiple similar animations Okay, so I think that you can see that the ramp behavior is very beneficial. If you have very simple animations to do, it can help you out a great deal. And multiple similar animations, it will save you a ton of time in the long run. 
That's it for this video. If you liked the video, give us a big thumbs up. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so that you'll be updated when future videos in the series are uploaded. And all that remains for me now is to say, see you in part 16.